Right. Um, hope you can hear this okay. Um, this is the first of our online lectures. Hopefully it's, there's not going to be too many of these because it's not as easy to record these as it is to speak in person. So you just have to bear with me because I'm getting used to the technology. Um, so basically this is lecture two, um, Stones and Stargates, um, examining the possibility of astronomical alignments at sacred sites. So we'll be looking at, um, at starting off with Stonehenge um, and examining um, the, the idea that these ancient sites in Britain in the Neolithic and Bronze Age were aligned on the heavenly bodies, not just um, the sun as um, was kind of the old idea, but, but also on the stars. Um, so I'm going to split this into, into eight parts so it's easier to upload. Um, first part, let's click on the next slide. I'm um, going to give you a brief introduction. Um, it says introduction archaeoastronomy, archeo but really it's just going to be an introduction to the lectures and to um, the ideas surrounding Stonehenge. Um, in the second um, section, each of these is going to be about 15 minutes, we're going to look at the, the mechanics of the sky. So we'll see how the sky changes over time. Um, and how this enables us to see what exactly is being pinpointed. Um, there's a whole kind of different set of um, uh, processes going on um, which dictate the alignments of sides. So you have a whole set surrounding the sun and the moon and then the stars which move at a completely different rate through a completely different cycle uh, which is really important in dating some of the sites. So that's going to be a bit of a sort of scientific attempt at explanation of, of archaeoastronomy. Um, then I'll look at the earliest evidence um, of archaeoastronomy in prehistoric Britain. This is the, the megalithic tombs dating from about 4000 to 2000 BC. Then we'll look at specific examples of other sites which show alignments on the sun on the moon and the stars, um, mainly Newgrange in Ireland, and Callanish on the Isle of Lewis in the Hebrides, um, before turning to Stonehenge. And then we'll question whether the normal alignment, normal proposed alignment of Stonehenge on the midsummer sun is valid or whether there's other explanations which um, hold more water. Um, then I will look at a program called Stellarium. This is the one I used during my PhD to try and work out exactly what the sites were aligned on. So that's going to be a kind of tutorial in how to use these, these sites. Um, and I will, I will argue that what these programs show us is that the midsummer sun isn't the, the focus of these monuments at all. So then we'll look at what is the, the most probable um, alignments in the Henges and other circular monuments of, of uh, the Neolithic and Bronze Age. And these are the stars of Crooks and the stars of Cassiopeia, um, which together are found in the Milky Way, which then suggests in the last part the start of, a, of an attempt to, to piece together the, the lost mythology, the religion behind um, the building of these sites. Now, the first um, real attempt to link Stonehenge with astronomy was um, came from the mind of an antiquarian called William Stukeley, who was uh, writing in the 17th century and 18th century. Um, he was convinced um, that Stonehenge was actually pre-Roman, and before this date, it was all, it was presumed that it was. Um, a dark age or, or a Roman uh, piece of engineering. He was the first to suggest that it was prehistoric. He had the wrong dates. Um, he didn't go back far enough. And we'll see that um, actually knowing the precise date is crucial when you're using, um, when you're looking at archaeoastronomy, because obviously the, the stars change over time. So if you're going to 
argue that a site is aligned on certain stars, you'd need to know when the site was built in order to get the right stars, otherwise you're looking in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, Stukeley, however, argued, even though he thought it was an Iron Age Druidic monument, here's a sketch of that he did of Stonehenge with a, with a Druid in the centre, um, he argued that the site was aligned um, on the sun, on the summer solstice sunrise. Um, now for solstices, and we'll talk about this later, there isn't that much of a change over time um, between in the rising position, rising and setting positions of the sun and moon. So a, a site which has been aligned on the solstices um, is more or less going to still be aligned on the solstices today. So it's different with stars. Certain sites which are aligned with constellations, say in 2000 BC, won't align on those constellations today. But with solstices, there isn't that, that room for error. The, the sun is rising and setting in roughly the same place as it did thousands of years ago. So even though Stukeley didn't know the real date of Stonehenge, his suggestion that it was aligned on the solstices um, is actually does hold water, even though, as we'll see, he probably had the wrong solstice. So here's an illustration from his Stonehenge, a temple restored to the British Druids, published in 1740, and it shows um, what is the trilithon, that's the three stone gateway through which the sun would be seen rising. So his idea is that the, it's a temple to the sun and it acts as a, as a calendar, more or less. So here we can see a plan of Stonehenge. I, I will go into Stonehenge in greater detail later, but this is the main alignment um, of the site here. You have to forgive um, the lack of straight lines. But basically, it's a northeast alignment, which is the point in the sky um, where the midsummer sun rises. This is the, the, the f most northerly point the sun rises during the year, which is why the days are longer at that, that point of year. Now, the question is, are you supposed to be in the circle looking out towards um, the sunrise? Or is there another orientation? Are you supposed to be looking the other way from either the circle or the avenue towards what is the midwinter sunset? That's the question. Um, we will look at it in, in slight detail later, but really we're going to be looking at the stars in this lecture. But um, to kind of get ahead of myself, most archaeologists now think that the alignment of Stonehenge is to the midwinter, midwinter sunset rather than the midsummer sunrise. So all those people gathered at Stonehenge in the summer, although not this year, obviously, um, are there at the wrong time of year. But then it's probably nicer camping out there in the summer than in the middle of the winter, especially with our climate when you're not likely to actually see the sunrise because it's wet and cloudy. Now, this is a diagram of the rising and setting points of the sun and moon. Now this is quite an important slide. I'll be using this, or at least referring to it quite a bit during this lecture. And you can see that the rising, and here's the rising point of the solstice, the sun of the summer solstice, that's the most northerly rising point. And it will set again at its most northerly point sort of on the western horizon there. Now, the opposite, uh, on um, the equinoxes, which means equal night, the sun rises directly east and sets directly west. And in the winter, the sun rises at its most southerly point, which is down here, and that's the direction of mid midwinter sunrise, and sets at its most southerly southwesterly point, so that's down here. And in between, let's fill this in, kind of, um, uh, the sun is rising at, at these points. So the sun it only rises in these sections of the sky, forming a kind of bow tie or butterfly shape. So any sites 
that have their entrances kind of outside of this location, let's say kind of an entrance down here or one up here, isn't pointing at the sun. It's not oriented on the sun. It's only when you have these eastern and western areas that the sun is being referenced. Now as for the moon, the moon rises and sets slightly outside of the, of the sun, the area limited by the sun. But again, the moon can rise and set anywhere within kind of this same bow tie or butterfly. And anything outside that, to the north or south, is not going to be aligned on either the sun or the moon. So we have to look for other explanations of why a site might have its entrances or, or passage aligned, aligned to those other directions. Now, Stonehenge isn't alone. We, um, we know that there are a number of sites around the world which have solstitial alignment, um, such as temples of Malta and also the throne room at Knossos in Crete, where we have where the throne itself is aligned to the midwinter sun and the lustral basin on the opposite side of the throne room aligned to the midsummer sunrise. So there is this, we do know that there are sites which have this um, uh, midsummer and midwinter alignments, so Stonehenge isn't alone. Um, but in prehistoric sites in Europe, in Northwest Europe and in sites in Britain and Ireland, it does seem to be, uh, and I'll go into this a bit in a bit more detail later, that sites have midwinter rather than midsummer alignments. So this is Gosek in Germany. This dates to about 3000 BC. It's a big circular site. Um, if this was in England, we would we would probably say it was a henge. Yeah, there aren't many circular sites outside of Britain, but this is one of the few. And here we have an entrance to the north. Um, but instead of whereas at Stonehenge we have that northwestern, northeastern alignment there at Gosek instead what we have are these two alignments down here which if we go back to the diagram that we saw before um, this is a, it's a circle of posts really rather than, than stones like stone here. Um, this alignment um, seems to be again on the solstices the winter Solstice, sunrise and sunset. So why why winter? Why is why celebrate winter more than summer? And it's a question of uh, of what, what you're doing your ritual for. Um, do you celebrate um, harvest at summer with the midsummer, or do you celebrate the return of um, light and warmth at the depth of winter? That seems to be the more natural thing to do. The latter, um, it's the origin of Christmas, you know, the, the, the saviour born um, in, the, in the depth of winter that will bring new life in summer. And, and the myth that we'll be looking at in the future will show this um, fascination with um, rebirth at midwinter and the rescue of the sun um, from, from the depths, from the prison of the underworld, from the, from the demons of, of winter. And because that's present in the mythology, um, it makes sense that um, this is why we see it in the ritual sites as well, and that Stonehenge, in fact, again is is to be seen as a midwinter site rather than a midsummer. Now, the idea that there was more to these sites than just a, a solar orientation um, was really championed in the post-war period. Um, by figures like um, Gerald Hawkins, um, uh, Alexander Tom. Alexander Tom was very much into, into lunar um, orientations. He looked at a number of stone circles looking at um, orientations on, on the rising and setting point of um, the full moon, for instance. Um, 
but in recent years we've started to look at stars as, as a possible orientation for these sites and it's only become possible since we've properly dated the sites it's only since sort of the 70s that, that we've realized that Stonehenge wasn't you know early Iron Age or late Bronze Age we now know um, that it was that it dates to about 3100 BC and this is in the Neolithic period and it's only since we know that, that we can really use these astronomy programs that I'll talk about later to reconstruct the ancient sky and really see what um, the, the sites are being um, aligned to. Now, the idea that, that stars are, are used in the alignment of ancient sites isn't a new idea. Um, figures like Piazzi Smythe here um, looks at the Great Pyramid. This is his tomb, actually. Um, uh, he um, looked at the alignment of the shafts in the Great Pyramid and found that they pointed to, um, to stars, to stellar phenomena, not just um, not any sort of solar or lunar. He suggested, for instance, that the Great Pyramid was aligned on the star Thuban in Draco, which, as I'll go on to explain in a future part, um, was the pole star in 2500 BC when the, when the pyramid was built. This shows how much the stars change because obviously the pole star now is Polaris in Ursa uh, Minor, but in the time that the pyramids were built, it was Thuban in Draco, the dragon. Also, um, has first suggested that the star shafts in the king's and queen's chamber were pointing at certain stars, and um, Robert Bavell, amongst others, recently, what sort of the 1990s, um, have, have shown using astronomy software that these shafts in the pyramid are pointing at, here we are, Thuban in Draco, which is Alpha Draconis, the pole star, um, and also looking at Sirius and the belt stars of Orion, but only in a position where those stars were visible in 2500 BC. If you were to stand in the pyramid now and look up through those star shafts, if you could, you can't, um, because they are sort of blocked halfway, but symbolically they point to the stars. But if you were to stand there today, you wouldn't be looking at the belt of Orion or Sirius because the stars have shifted due to something called precession, which I'll talk about um, in a future slide. But what's important about this is that in focusing on certain stars, especially um, Orion and Sirius, we can tie it in to what we know about Egyptian mythology, say, where we have the image of Sirius as Isis, and depicted as a cow here, and Orion as the god Osiris, who's associated with rebirth especially the rebirth of the pharaoh, and we think that the pyramids are used as a kind of rebirth device so to enable the, the soul of the dead pharaoh to ascend to the stars and become one with the constellation of Orion. That's why I talk about Stargate. The, the temple is a, a mechanism whereby the soul of the dead is transferred to the heavens, and we will see that there's a possibility that the temples of ancient Britain did likewise. So in this lecture, we'll be looking at what the sites were possibly looking at, and then seeing whether they this suggests the start of a of a mythology that we can try and um, rebuild.